Oh my god. Oh my god. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I will gain three memory going up to eight. Uh, and then he also gains security attack plus one uh, when a card is milled. So he will be swinging in for two checks on 12, sir. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Right. First check. Okay, guys. Well, here we go. We are basically at match point, I guess. Yeah, we are one win away from taking the entire series, securing the eight necessary victories, uh, and with that, putting an end to the crazy journey that Sealed Only 1v1 has been. Now, if I know Pete, he is going to make me really fight for it. There's a good chance I'm going to lose today, and we'll have to go for one, maybe two more, who knows, depending on what that mad lad is cooking up. Uh, full disclosure, we have been talking back and forth saying, you know, this is potentially the last episode, so maybe we do just go and do something crazy. Uh, so I, I'm wondering, Pete might have a very nasty surprise for me, and this might not end up being the last episode. But in the event that it is, I obviously still have some decisions to make. This weird Imperial free Vmon box deck has, with the help of Ragna and Jessmon, taken me so far to seven victories. It managed to win out I don't want to say decisively against Gallantmon last week, but it certainly put in the work. And yeah, now I got to decide, do I stick with the guys here or do I make maybe one more cheeky switch and kind of just go all out and play something fun for what is going to be potentially the last match? It's tough. It's a really tough decision to make, honestly. I've put so much time, money, and effort into building this deck out. And while it wasn't quite what I was hoping it would turn out to be, uh, you know, it's it's done its job most of the time, but there are also some very good options available to us right now. One particularly busted one, um, and I have to really consider uh, in the next two hours what I'm going to crack open because, uh, yeah, I'm playing with Pete in about two hours, give or take, so I, I got to pick what I'm going to open, I got to crack everything up, and then I got to throw a deck together. Maybe I just make a few upgrades here. Maybe it's the new deck and we just see if we can cobble together something from the mountain I have uh, stashed away in my desk. But either way, things are going to be interesting. And uh, I think I only have about 15 minutes to deliberate. So I am going to cut things here. I'm going to go take a long, hard think about which of the two uh, piles of sealed product I want to open. And then, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, guys. So I sat down. I had an espresso, I thought about it, and I decided, you know what, this might be the last match. I, I might not have another chance to do anything crazy like this. So while I did want to stay faithful to Imperial Armor, Vmon, whatever it was, uh, I did ultimately decide to use the budget on the Beelzemon Advanced deck set. It's, it's a complete like quasi-competitive deck out of the box. Like I absolutely had to, and considering the fact that Gallantmon has still been a problem, and having played Gallantmon myself and gotten railroaded by this deck, I thought, yeah, I mean, this is the only choice that makes sense. So I, I'll obviously be cracking this open. I'll have my shiny uh, 50 in foil ready to go to take Pete on. Uh, but of course I did also win last week's engagement, which means I have access to some bonus packs. And sadly EX2 was sold out everywhere because people are trying to get their EX2 Beelzemons to fill this out uh, on the cheap. Nobody wants to pay like 35, 40 bucks Canadian for that guy. I didn't either, but since those weren't available, uh, this is the next best option. Uh, to be honest, it was the only option. Dragonic Roar was the only other set available at pretty much every other shop I went to. So yeah, I don't know. I already have some purple hybrids. I don't know what's going to come out of here necessarily. Maybe I get lucky. I think Calling from the Darkness is in here, so it'll help me recycle uh, some of the pieces here because I think there's only two of the main starter deck Beelzemon and the Impmon in here. So Calling would be nice. Uh, if I get really lucky and pull Lucemon Chaos Mode, that would be cool. That would definitely make my day. Other than that, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I feel like I'm kind of just consigning these to the dustbin, but uh, hey. Uh, and maybe actually, since this will take a little while to open up, uh, I'll just start with the victory packs here and maybe that'll set the tone, I guess. Um, although we know what's in there, so I don't know what tone I'm really trying to set here. 
Ah, oh, guys, it's just, it's too much to think about. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited by the prospect of this being the last one, and I, I really hope we go out in style. Okay, Schwarzler Sats, if we have plenty of Tamers, cool. Oh, look, another blue hybrid, great. Purple I can't use, can't use. Eismon, cool. Blue Hawaii Death, Starlight Velocity. That, there's something shiny-ish back there. Koda, and... Yo! <laughs> Yo! Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I finally got some of that peat luck. Oh shit. Do you know what? Honestly, guys, I'm gonna tell you straight up. Uh, I was trying to find this as a single for a, a purple hybrids deck that I was building recently, and like I just had to shell out way more than I wanted to, even though the prices dipped recently. And when I was picking up these packs last night, I was like, can you imagine if I pull this out of the thing? I was just like, can I get a refund now on the one I just ordered? Oh my God, first pack. Wow, Lusamon Chaos Mode. Okay, well, we are set. Um, oh my God, this is so good. I'm like, I'm like shaking, but this is so good because uh, if you'll remember, we actually pulled Creepymon as the secret rare um, out of BT8 a little while ago, and he can actually play this guy out if I mill enough cards um, with its on Digivolve. So there's a way to cheat this out. Also, Beelzemon just like mills a ton of stuff, so I can actually play him for super cheap. Oh my God, I, I need to... I need to put that in a sleeve now. Holy shit. Holy shit. This is no longer a family friendly program. Lucimon Chaos Mode. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, it was worth it. That was so worth it. Oh my goodness. Those are just like the first three packs I grabbed off the box. The guy was just like, this is all I have left. And I was just like, all right, well, one, two, three, there we go. I'm not going to keep driving around Toronto at night to find stuff. Oh my God. Gatsuban, Bulkbon, it doesn't even matter. Purple Hybrid, cool, sure. Monochromon, Toy Agumon, calling for the darkness, yes! Oh my god, these packs are being so good to be. Oh my god, Jet Sylphie, Strabimon, Ancient Kazemon, don't care, don't care. Okay, well, we got the two cards we were looking for out of the set, and I, I think I have two of this already, but look at that, we got some purple hybrids. Oh my god, oh my god. Ugh. Oh, I'm almost glad they didn't have EX2 available now. Look at that. Okay. Last pack. Pulsemon, Waymon, Nemon, uh, Gigasmon, Orochimon. Doesn't really work in Beals because it's discard, not trash from the deck. Metal, Kabuterimon, Blue Hawaii Death. I think that's a Chaostromon back there. I'm pretty sure that's a Chaostromon back there, Koroma. And, oh, Magna Guru. <laughs> I mean, this is cool. We did technically pull one Machine Dramon, but let's be honest, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. This is also really awesome. Uh, it's a blue hybrid, not one I can really. Oh, actually, no, I have a couple Beowulf, so I could theoretically play this. But, um, wow, just a nice, a nice pickup. But that is what we really wanted. Oh my God! All right, let me get this bulk out of the way. Oh, all right. Cool, gonna get those in sleeves pretty quickly as well. Uh, but yeah, I think these are basically the takeaways. So I have access to a couple of purple hybrids. I don't have any Koichis, so I don't think I'll run the um, Kaiser Leomon because it's potentially a three Evo over my level um, my level threes. But yeah, uh, I think a copy or two of Loimon doesn't hurt because there's a couple Ion Makos in here. This is obviously gonna be clutch because I'll be able to get back my Beelzemons in the case where I want a hard Evo up instead of trying to do the warp play, especially since I think there's just two of these guys in here. And obviously Lusamon is going in right away because like, why wouldn't it? Oh my God. Pete. You pulled two death X's. You cannot hate me for this. Oh my God. Okay, guys, well, um, I am gonna hit pause on the recording very quickly. I am gonna open this up and we'll very quickly look at some of the cards we have and hopefully not balloon the runtime too much because I'm just babbling like an excited idiot. Oh my God, we pulled the Lucivon Chaos Mode. Okay, guys, well, uh, this is actually my second take because somebody started cutting their lawn in the middle of the first one. Um, so you missed the great joke about me accidentally calling this the Lusamon advanced deck set, but hey ho, that's the way things go. Um, I also already sorted through the promos. I mean, to be honest, these are the four that matter. The reprints of EX2 Impmon, which allow us to turbo mill if we mill this guy off of another effect. And then we have an additional copy of a Beelzemon. It is just the BT2 secret, which has been power crept a decent amount. It's only an 11K, it can warp, yes, but like, you pop a level four and then it does nothing else. So uh, not great, but we need the level sixes, so why not? And then Pagumon as the fifth egg seems pretty good to me. Um, and the rest obviously is just cool. Hey, shout out to the Vmon we started the series with, at least you're still representing, but 
We'll throw obviously the purple stuff in there right away, uh, just to round things out alongside these two beautiful <laughs> additions. And then we'll just go through the rest of the deck here quickly. So we of course have Yamon, which is the main egg. When attacking, if you're the main Beelzebub online, mill two, great, fill up our trash. Warp into Beelzebub if you have 20 or more in trash, fantastic. Shame it's only at two. <sighs> Shady consumer anti-consumer practices in the starter deck, what can you do? Mill two on play, draw one, great. Uh, blocker, basically blocker that mills two on play, which is helpful. It means you don't lose too much momentum if you do have to slam down the level four. Uh, we have Witchmon, which actually, I, I thought at first this card was a little mediocre, but having been bodied by this deck a couple times now, uh, yeah, this puts in work. Milling three when digivolving, usually you can at least make this like a one evolution cost, maybe even free if you mill a Wizardmon or a couple of Deathslingers. Uh, and that's just led to a lot of tempo because it lets you go into the Balmon next, which mills another three. And then if you have 10 uh, or more cards in trash, you know, triggered by one Digivolving, uh, if he's deleted, you play out a Bielzamon. So great. And obviously that lasts until the end of the opponent's turn. Sadly, yep, just two of our actual big boss monster, uh, the Bielzamon with this fantastic art. But hey, mills four when you Digivolve into it. You gain a memory for every 10 cards in your trash when you do uh, mill something, which is great. And then when you do mill something on your turn, you get security attack plus one. And at 12k, uh, yeah, that's pretty respectable, right? We have two. Oh, I thought there were four of these. Uh, so two Bealstar Mons, um, kind of like the old Bealstar. You can reduce her cost in this case just for the number of cards in your trash. You uh, cut the play cost down by four for every 10. And then all turns when a card is trashed from your deck, you can play an Immon for free and that Immon gets Rush. So that's useful. Um, instead of a hybrid for game, you can potentially Impmon for game if you have a way to trigger the mill. And uh, on the opponent's turn, when they attack, it'll just mill a card automatically. It'll basically let you play out an Impmon, which we are uh, currently in low supply of. And then two blast mode. Uh, I'm glad this is two and not one. That would be really mean. When it gets milled, you pop something, starts at level three, but for every 10 in your trash, you increase the level. So cool, we can potentially blow up Pete's level fours and fives pretty easily. And then of course the game ending uh, thing here, when did evolving unsuspend? And if there's 20 or more cards in trash, gain three memory. So basically it's a one Evo and then you just swing again for game. We have four Iron Mako. I thought there was only gonna be two in here. Okay, so great. Basically on play, it's a searcher for your main line. And then uh, on your turn, when one of your purple Digimon Digivolves, you can rest this to stack the top card of your, uh, or st stack the deck with the top card uh, from your hand. And then you gain one memory. And of course uh, you can actually sequence this. So let's say we Digivolve into Witchmon, you stack a card with Iron Mako's effect and then Witchmon mills. So you can get access to the mill effect there. Uh, for example, maybe we put Rivals Barrage here, which basically uh, is kind of like a memory boost. Uh, it can be a kill spell when just cast from hand, but if you mill it, it goes into the battle area, and then later you pop it to get back a purple Digimon or Tamer, which is great. And then we have some much needed re reprints. So yep, we have uh, Impmon on deletion, mill three, cool. We have Wizardmon, uh, when milled from the deck, gain one memory, and then it has a similar effect uh, to I and Mako to stack the deck, but you have to reveal the card in this particular case, which is a little funny, I guess. Uh, Skull Satamon gives us another level five. It's not the worst thing in the world. I think I might play like two or three of this. Uh, it also lets us recover our Demon Lords. Uh, now, to be fair, this wants to be in the trash more often than not, but I guess having the option to cast it from hand isn't terrible. Uh, and we can go up into Creepy Mon or get Creepy Mon back with this as well. So it is going to put in work. And then it has an Inheritable where when you trash uh, a card from the deck, you gain one memory. So paired alongside this, cool, uh, cheap Evo. Deathslinger, it is removal, uh, pops a level four, but for every 10 in the trash, you can uh, up the level that you can pop. And then if it's milled, you gain a memory. So cool. Uh, this alongside Wizardmon uh, and Ian Mako and cards like Witchmon, uh, just really allow you to gain back a ton of memory and go unga bunga into the opponent there. So absolutely fantastic. And then, yeah, we got the, oh, it's too bad we finally got a mat with a memory marker, right? Uh, these would be really cool to use, but yeah, and then just the rule card, so we'll put that aside. Uh, really, I, we've got a good core to work with here. I do have a decent amount of purple cards kind of stashed away. In fact, I can probably just pull those out quickly and have a look. So uh, complementing Lusamon, we of course have Creepymon, and we actually have the Ofani fall down mode that we pulled. So that's an option. Uh, and then if I pull out the stack over here, Yuji is not a purple card, what am I doing? <laughs> Okay, so um, slightly inferior egg. We've got some Gazis, some Psychmons if Pete's suddenly on the Digicross shenanigans. We've got Solmon, which gets you a memory when something is trashed. So great to put underneath um, Skull Satamon, for example. 
pretty good. Lady Devimon, she mills three on Digivolution, but like strictly speaking, she's a worse version of this card, I think. So uh, maybe just a one-off tech if I really need to turbo out. I have the old Skull Satamons that I've been pulling out of BT8. Yeah, they're not foil, what are you gonna do? Uh, but luckily for me, I have access to four copies of Miss Memory Boost. So this mills two and then draws one, and obviously uh, it gets you the two memory back later. So this is definitely going in at a full four count. Um, but really, Creepymon, Lusamon, maybe Ophanimon if I'm really like pressed for a Mega. Um, this would at least allow me to get some recovery in uh, and kind of play that game. And then on Deletion, I can play out something. So maybe I can play out like the Candlemon or I can play out uh, one of the Impmons um, and just be a little bit more threatening there. So I definitely have some options. Um, I've been rambling long enough though, and uh, the match with Pete is about an hour away, so I've gotta jump into the deck profile here, see what I'm gonna throw together, and then, um, you know, <laughs> we'll look over the list and see if this is the one that finally carries us to victory. I mean, what is there to say here? It's a Beelzemon deck. It's not a totally optimal Beelzemon deck, however, since we are unfortunately lacking that full 4-4 line of the Warp Impmon and the new starter deck Beelzemon. I'm hoping that won't be too much of an issue because I do have a few other purple level 6s that I can jam in, but we'll see. Uh, I certainly will have a little bit of a harder time going for the big blowout uh, towards the end of the game if I don't find these pieces early. But thankfully, the deck does a pretty good job of milling and recovering its pieces. Now, obviously, having Creepymon here is really great because, again, we are a little short on purple level 6s. It does a little bit of milling itself, and of course, it can let me cheat out Lusamon Chaos Mode if Pete gets a little greedy and has a few bodies in play. Psychmon, of course, is a mandatory floodgate to deal with the double death X situation. Sadly, it's two spots that I basically have to allocate to any color that will allow me to play one of these play cost reducing um, floodgates because, yeah, double death X is a thing and it continues to be the bane of my existence in this series. And then Miss Memory Boost is here to fill the trash while giving me a little extra oomph for later on. This deck is pretty good at gaining the memory, so I think more often than not, this is basically just a mill too. And hey, it can be a little cheaper because you might mill a Death Slinger or a Wizard Mon off of its own effect, and playing a memory boost for you know two or even one seems pretty good to me. And then we have Calling from the Darkness, which is a really nice one of to grab back some key combo pieces. I know I'm going to end up milling a lot of stuff that I probably want to have in hand, and since I only have two copies of Rivals Barrage right now, this is going to put in a little bit more work. Now, overall, I think this is a solid list, and honestly, as long as I don't mill myself out, there is a good chance that I can just blow Pete out and secure a very clean 2-0 to close out the series. And uh, on that note, let's jump into what may be the final battle of the series. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're going to jump right into the game. And believe me when I say I was very confused when Pete flipped over the Garimon egg. And I only got more confused as Pete started building up in the raising area and slamming down vanillas. Like, level 5 Cordramon? Uh, what? <laughs> Now, I didn't really understand what was going on until I saw the EX3 Volkdramon, and honestly, by then it was a little too late. Now, I will also admit that I am hella fresh with the Beelzemon deck, and mistakes were made. I basically rushed towards my win condition, trying desperately to pull off my big warp combo to blow Pete out. And you know what, to be fair, I almost did. My trash was full, I had my Impmon ready to go, and then this happened. Oh my, oh my god, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so I will gain 3 memory going up to 8, uh, and then he also gains security attack plus 1 uh, when a card is milled, so he will be swinging in for 2 checks on 12, sir. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Right. First check. Oh! Uh, oh! I, I think I might target. <laughs> the Beelzemon? Are they attacking Digimon. Yes. Okay, uh, my Beelzemon <sighs> is deleted. Oh my god. And, um. 
Okay. Well. Oh, my heart is pounding. Oh. So, yeah. I lost game one. I just milled myself out, and after smacking into that guy, of course, there were no plays to make. I just, I literally would lose passing the turn back to myself. So, hey ho, it happens. What can you do? Sadly, though, game two was just a run of bad luck as I never found my two copies of Beelzemon in time to pull off the combo. And once again, I milled myself to the point where I couldn't actually play the game. If I remember correctly, I ended up getting stuck without a level 5 in hand to bridge into my Beelzemon and then go into the combo from there. So, yeah, um, pretty painful and a stark reminder of why it is such an evil practice to only include like 2-2 two -two copies of your, your main pieces in the starter decks. Like Bandai, this product was so good. If you just gave us two extra Impmons, two extra Beels, I, I could live with that, you know? But hey, at the end of the day, it was it was a big sad when I had to throw my hand down. But I also have to accept that it's gonna be like that sometimes, especially with a deck that mills itself to death in the way that Beelzemon does. Guys, I know, I totally blew that. But I kind of have to take it in stride because it's hilarious. Uh, we have our first self-mill to defeat in the series. Uh, hopefully the last for me anyways. And you know, honestly, Pete made a good read, um, also because I was dumb and flashed the Beelzemon box to him at the end of our last recording session. So, you know, he he figured, yeah, he's probably gonna try and play that, and he made a perfectly good read and brought Dorbikmon security control, whatever that was. Uh, and you know, yeah, to be fair, I, I was also a little cocky thinking that Beelzemon was gonna be an auto win button too. So uh, you could say I had it coming, now, where to go from here is a bit awkward though, because with Pete closing the gap on me and a lot of directions available to me, I am once again at a bit of a loss. Like, do I open up BT-11 and maybe chase the L-Force stuff there, because why not? Uh, do I chase some of the new Imperial Dramon support out of BT-12? Do I also open BT-12 because there is more Beelzemon stuff in there? God, no, please, no. Uh, do I go back to trying to play my weird janky armor deck? Like, what is the play? What product do I grab? I don't know, but I better figure that out soon because, well, I'm not going to have a lot of time before the next recording session. I really need to order my booster packs and get the stuff in. Uh, and yeah, hopefully I can just make a good call or get some good stuff because Pete is closing that gap and I just, I want to secure that eighth win, man. I want it so badly. <laughs> there are exciting things for Pete and I to both move on to. So guys, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to go away. I'm gonna brainstorm like hell. I'm gonna hopefully open up some absolutely busted packs and from there, you know, we'll just, we'll close it out. Anyway, that'll do it for today, guys. I will catch you all in the next one. And until then, take it easy.